Good day everyone. We are going to talk about the overview first of the operating systems. In your syllabus weeks 1 to 3, we we'll talk about the basic structure of computers and then the introduction to operating systems. Please check to confirm. So the basic structure of computers. Computer architecture in general covers three aspects which are hardware instruction set architecture and its computer organization so the, the hardware as we all know it consists of electronic circuits display magnetic and optical storage data and its communication facilities so from the definition definition itself it's the tangible parts or the parts that we can touch now isa on the other hand is a programmable programmable visible machine interface such as instruction set, registers, memory organization, and exception and handling. Well, there are two main approaches, which are the CISC, or the Complex Instruction Set Computer, and Reduced Instruction Set Computer. So, from the word itself, it's a programmer visible machine interface. Next is the computer organization. It includes the high-level aspects of a design, such as memory system, the bus structure, and the design of the internal CPU. So how or the flow of a the the so mang English sa sulod no of a computer, and also it talks about the design of internal CPU. So the process itself. Now, what is a computer? computer is a fast electronic calculating machine which accepts digital input. It processes it according to the internally stored instructions. So, yeah, basically what we do is we instruct. No? We tell the computer what to do. So, it does not work unless we do something about it. The internal operation of the computer can be de depicted as the figure below. So here we can see the three steps in a computer system or how a computer system works. So the first step is to fetch. Of course, the computer will not work unless we will not do something about it. So it fetches instructions or uh, from memory okay, and then increment the program counter. Next. Since the computer does not know or does not understand our language, it decodes it. So, decodes the bit pattern in the instruction register. So now, the computer and the user are communicating. So the computer uh, understood already what we instruct. And then, the computer executes otherwise our instruction. So it executes, for example, we are going to click a folder. It fetches, decodes, and executes. Alright. So, the next one is we are going to classify various categories of, or, yeah, the computers, no, which are classified into some of the various categories. Now, we have the microcomputer. So, microcomputer are personal computers. No, so it's a thing that we use in our daily lives. So I'm sure also that some of us have personal computers, no, for personal uses, such as computing applications, word processing, photo editing, email, and the internet. Also, we have the laptop as a category. So laptop is a portable compact computer that can run on power supply or battery battery unit. So <clears throat> A laptop, biskandili siya saksak, it will also it will still turn on because na siya battery daan na intact, okay? And also dapat charge siya, di ba? So all components are integrated as one compact unit, so it's generally more expensive. Sometimes we call it a notebook. Okay, so we also have workstation. So workstation from the word itself work, okay? So it's a powerful computer, uh, desktop computer designed for specialized tasks. 
So for example, sa offices, we are um, required to uh, do something like photo editing. We cannot work on a very on a computer na very slow, right? Like iPad or not iPad, sorry, uh, slow mga computers like uh, Intel, Atom, no mga year kupung kupung pa na mga uh, processors. So it will be hard for the employees to do their task with a very slow processor. All right. So next we have the supercomputer from the word itself, super, no? So it's a computer that is considered to be the fastest in the world. Now it is used to execute tasks that would take a lot of time for other computers. So example of this one is modeling weather systems, genome sequence. So we can refer to a site indicated. Okay, so supercomputers, um, the pag-asa, of course, uses supercomputers because what would happen if we cannot detect uh, weather systems. Now, what would happen to the Philippines? So, yeah. We also have mainframe. So, mainframe is a large, expensive computer capable of simultaneously processing data for hundreds of thousands of users. So, yeah. It is used to store, manage, and process large amounts of data that needs to be reliable, secured, and centralized. So, kind of mga big companies, no? Siguro like Google, uh, they are they need mainframe for their um, work, of course, because it has to process large amounts of data like Facebook, right? Now we also have handheld. It is also called PDA. It's a computer that fits into a pocket, runs on batteries, and it's used for and it's used while holding the unit in your hand. So it's used as an appointment book, address book, calculator, and note pads. Okay, so I, I I'm not sure if handheld computers are still existing nowadays. Um, you can search online what handheld computer or the pictures of a handheld computers are, because um, I'm. I'm not sure. I've never been. Uh, I've never seen a handheld computer before. But um, I think handheld computers are aren't that famous nowadays because our shampoo, our technology is evolving. So yeah. Okay. Now let's move on with the multi-core. Have multiple cores. It's uh, multiple cores course right is parallel computing platforms no, it has many cores or computing elements in a single chip so example is a sony playstation core 2 duo i3 i7 and etc so i'm sure that your computers are already multi cores no okay so in our next video we will be talking about the functional unit so thank you for listening for this video Hope you will have a wonderful day. Goodbye.